Welcome to the first devlog of Soul Whisper and a summary of one year of game development with the Godot game engine. I have always enjoyed discovery in games, not just the discovery or exploration of a fantasy world, but also the discovery of game mechanics, new equipment, new skills, new tactics. When a game combines that satisfactory feeling of discovering something new with a sense of progression, I'll have some stick deprived nights of gaming. Soul Whisperer is a strategy RPG that seeks to scratch that discovery itch. It draws inspiration from games like Blood Brothers RPG, Rage of Bahamut and Summoner Wars. Card games in which you collect familiar creatures, different games, different names, but all have you do the same. You build a squad, you experiment with combinations, you discover new tactics and synergies and take on the world and other players. Yes, multiplayer. In today's game industry, these type of games are plagued by a heavy pay-to-win monetization model, killing any idea of equal PvP grounds. I hate pay-to-win. Also, to appeal to an as wide as possible audience, the strategic depth with which you are sold at the start turns out to be pretty shallow when you see the top 25 players field near identical or considered optimal squad composition. That is something I want to address. Soul Whisperer will be a deep strategic game in which you are presented with enough options that a constantly shifting meta will emerge. There will be a kryptonite for every tactic, and if one team composition becomes too popular among the community, the players that are able to quickly adapt and counter will be able to quickly move up the leadership boards. Development on Soul Whisperer started in September 2019. It is developed 95% on livestream and I spend about 7-8 to eight hours per week on it. Many features like the creature management, squad management, the tactics, equipping, inventory, looting, randomized enemies, randomized loot chests, randomized loot, the combat system and the dynamic map system are all programmed and ready for a first alpha release. In future devlogs I'll get into more detail on some of these systems as they are very interesting from a programming and design but also gameplay perspective. Some I have never seen in games before and it makes me really excited about Soul Whisper. For the engine I chose Godot. I revisited Godot around one and a half year ago in the spring of 2019. I had looked at it before but back when it was in version number 2. I didn't find it appealing at the time. Having had experience with Solar 2D, Love 2D, Game Maker, Unreal and Unity, Godot 3 felt super fresh. The user interface and node system are super intuitive and coding in Godot's homegrown GDScript language, which is based on Python and some Lua, is a huge advantage as it makes coding go so much faster. I'm also extremely pleased with the high level multiplayer integration based on the ENET protocol. It is one of the most elegant implementations of the ENET protocol I've ever seen in a game engine. And I'm building the entire multiplayer network architecture on it. I originally started out with the goal of making the game in 2D isometric. Originally, two of my friends who work as artists in the game industry would help me with that. But COVID-19 threw a wrench into those plans and after much debate with myself and the community on livestream, I've decided to move to a 3D orthographically projected world. The main reason to move to 3D is that there are simply very few assets available for 2D isometric. I could render the isometric projections out of 3D models in Blender, but if I got the 3D models anyway, I may as well make a 3D game. Apart from creating the world, there are still many other things to do, and I believe I'll be working on Soul Whisperer for another year before I'll be at an early access stage. Things that still need to be implemented are the evolution system to evolve creatures, the character progression system, the training system, dialogue and quest systems, PvP encounters and leadership boards, as well as a ton of balancing to create that constantly shifting meta that I was talking about earlier. I'll make sure to cover these systems in future devlogs. If you can't wait for the devlogs, I'll livestream the development every Tuesday and Thursday. I used to do that on Twitch, but I'll be experimenting with YouTube live streaming from next week. Right, I want to keep this devlog short and I think this is enough for now. You have all voted on how often you want to see these devlogs and it looks like I'll be making one per month. Let me know in the comments which of the aforementioned systems you would love to see a future devlog on. For those of you that appreciate my tutorial content, don't worry. These devlogs won't take anything away from the tutorials I make on the Godot game engine. So that's it for today. Hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. 
I'll catch you all in the next episode. And as always, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys. Blah, blah, blah. That's a, that's a lot of text, very little instructions, I may, uh, I may say. So when I take this and this, where, where do I set up that texture? Or is this the texture? Like if I paint this, oh, okay, that, <laughs> check. We found the texture. <laughs>